Best practice for building a VPC domain. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can create a VPC domain with regard of the best practices. Okay, you know that we configured the doubled VPC, a doubled VPC in the previous video, and now it's time of the, uh, for, uh, for example, understanding about the detail of the VPC domain and how we can configure the VPC domain with best practices and also we can understand we can inform uh, we should inform about some of the cautions maybe you encounter when you are configuring the VPC domain you know that a VPC domain define the grouping of switches participating in the VPC for example in the previous video I configured NXOS1 and NXOS2 in one VPC domain, okay? And because of that, this VPC domain defined the grouping of these two switches, okay? Participating, participating in the VPC, okay? From a configuration standpoint also, look at here, this is the configuration of VPC domain. Switch config VPC domain, a number between 1 to 1000 can be configured and this is the domain ID. The domain ID is this number, okay? From a configuration standpoint, VPC domain, okay, provide context to define global VPC system parameters. For example, let me to show you here VPC domain 1, okay, we configured VPC domain in the previous video. As you can see now, we are in the config vpc domain context and now we have some options for config for configuration for example in the previous video i used this command peer keep alive command but also we have another command for example we can configure a value for system mac i will talk about the uh, system mac i will explain it but for now we know that a uh, from a, from a configuration standpoint, VPC domain provide context to define global VPC system parameters. Let me to review. A VPC domain define the grouping of switches, okay, participating in the VPC. This is this is based on, con, uh, uh, for example, concept of VPC domain. And from a configuration view, VPC domain domain provide a a place for defining global VPC system parameters. Okay, as you know, when we need to configure a VPC, uh, for example, VPC, when we want to configure VPC, the process of building a VPC do a domain involve multiple steps that should be completed in the, uh, for example, following order. Let me to show you, look at here. This is the uh, configuration of this scenario. Uh, for example, uh, starting from the uh, switch one. The first command for configuring the VPC domain is VPC domain domain ID. Globally, configure a VPC domain identifier on both VPC devices. The first recommendation and the first requirement, okay? This is not re recommendation, this is a requirement. The domain ID, this number, okay, should be or must be the same on both peer devices. For example, we should configure the domain ID 1 in switch 1 and also domain ID 1 in switch 2. Let me to show you. In switch 1, we configured domain 1 and also in switch 2, we configured domain 1. This is the first requirement that we must do it. Look at here. The domain ID must be this, the same on both peer devices. After configuring the VPC domain, we can configure, we should configure VPC peer keep alive link on both peer device and ensure that the VPC peer keep alive link is operational. If not, VPC domain cannot successfully be formed. Let me to show you, look at here. In the, for example, VPC domain one, I use peer keep alive destination 10122, source 10121 in the VRF we configured. And now when you check the show VPC, you can see that here, we have VPC keep alive a status peer is alive. This is so important. After configuring the VPC domain, we should configure the peer keep alive link. And you know that if 
we don't configure this uh, peer keep alive link or vpc domain cannot successfully be formed because of that now we have two steps for configuring vpc domain the first is the uh, defining vpc domain id and this is same number this should be this must be same number between these two switch two peer device two vpc peer and after that configuring the peer keep alive link okay and then we should configure okay you know that we should configure layer 2 trunk port channel between the vpc peer device okay configure this port channel as a vpc peer link on both peer device and ensure that the port channel is operational we configured it look at here interface eth 112 and 113 configured as a port channel and then we configured interface port channel as a layer 2 trunk and finally this is the VPC peer link. We configured this link as VPC peer link. Let me to show you in the uh, switch one. Again, uh, show interface trunk can show us that uh, port channel one, port channel 10 now, uh, now has a status of trunking. And uh, you know that uh, this port channel is the VPC, the, this port channel uh, function in the VPC is the VPC peer link. We configured these two interface ETH 112 and ETH 113 as the first as the port channel as a trunk port channel and after that we configured this port channel as as a for example VPC peer link. Okay and finally we should configure port channel from the access device to this uh, for example VPC domain. For example we configured uh, the, uh, the ETH 11214 and also 15218 in a port channel, okay? And then we configured a unique logical VPC and joined the port channel across uh, 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 different VPC peer device. Look at here, interface ETH 11218 configured with the channel group one mode active. This is the port channel one. And finally, we configured interface port channel one as a member of vpc1 until now you learned about the uh, vpc domain command and also you learned that the, the the domain id must be the same on both peer device and finally you learn you reviewed the uh, steps for configuring the vpc okay now let me to uh, go uh, let me to talk about in depth more in depth about the uh, for example, VPC ID. We have some uh, cautions about the VPC domain ID. There are some situations where VPC domain ID must be configured with caution. Okay, typical case deals with double-sided VPC topology. This is the double-sided VPC topology. We configured it. One important thing that we should we must do is that VPC domain identifier or VPC ID must be different on both layers because this information is used as part of the LACP protocol. Let me to show uh, you in this scenario. Look at here. I wrote here in case of double side VPC domain identifiers must be different on both layers because this information is used as part of the LACP protocol. Let me to talk about this feature here. We have uh, this scenario again. This is the same scenario. You know that, uh, for example, we are using LACP for uh, between the VPC domain one and also VPC domain two. Okay. And as I mentioned before, one requirement is one, re one necessary requirement is using the VPC domain ID uh, with different uh, values between these two VPC domain. For example, if you are using on the upper VPC, VPC domain ID as one, you should configure the lower domain as the VPC domain two. Why we should use different values? Okay, let me to explain this. Uh, for example, requirement, and after that, we will learn about this requirement. For learning about this, for understanding this requirement, first you should know that finally, after configuring the two VPC domain, we have a logical switch. For example, switch A, this is contain the switch one, okay, and also switch two, and uh, other, uh, for example, logical switch, switch B, okay. 
This is the logical switch. About the VPC, switch 3, and also switch 4. And you know that we have now one port channel between these two logical switch. Let me to show you. This is the uh, port channel we created or virtual port channel we created between these two switches.